Hello, welcome to another fighting writing um, building video. This week we are going to have a look at putting together the first few buildings for the first board. Uh, it's been a while, it's taken a while to build. Um, I'm starting to appreciate just how much of an impact recording has on the build time. Um, it makes everything take a lot longer. Um, I was originally going to do this as three videos, one for each of the buildings, but they all use the same techniques, they're all painted the same, um, so it just made more sense to, to kind of lump them together into one video. So it's, it's kind of, that's kind of delayed it a little bit, getting them all finished. I've been on holiday. Um, I am going to invest in another camera as well, so not everything is kind of over the shoulder, over the top um, drone footage kind of angles. Um, but for now, that's all I've got. I will try and invest in something so we can do a little bit more of an over the shoulder view as well. Mix it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so for this, we've got a kind of living quarters tower um, where the guards would have lived back in the day. We've got a bridge that will go over what will become the canal. And there is a tall tower that would have been, in my mind, a kind of a storage facility for weapons, for food, for the guards and, and things like that. And that's going to be almost derelict and knocked down. Um, there are still bits to add at the end, kind of posters and um, weapon racks and things like that. But I'm going to wait until the whole board is finished, until this, this section of the board is finished, before adding those in so that I can see how it looks. Um, I hope you enjoy. If there's any, you have any questions, put them in the comments um, down below. Always great to hear from people, um, and I do my best to reply. So see you at the end. Because there were three different sections to this build, I made sure I marked them all out first, just so that I knew the kind of size that I wanted and cut them out from what you Americans call chipboard, we call just thick cardboard, um, that kind of stuff on the back of a pad. I knew for all of these I was need a lot of bricks. So the bricks were created using XPS foam, just cut down into 10 by 10 by 20 mil blocks and then shaken up in a container with some stones. Uh, there's loads of videos explaining how to do that online. Um, I think I got the idea from Devs and Dice, but I, you know I've seen it on quite a few videos. Uh, once I'd created, I'd guess, thousands of bricks, started sticking them down with the hot glue gun. I tried before using PVA glue. Um, super glue obviously melts the foam, so that's a no-go. But I um, found that just a hot glue gun on a low temperature. Um, this is a new glue gun that I've bought just for this project uh, because this has a low and high temperature and it makes such a difference having a low temperature for it um, rather than having to use high temperature, which just um, melts the foam. So this is just to stick them in place and it holds it really firm. I was a little bit worried that it would be quite fragile Obviously, everything in this project needs to be tough because it's going to be played with by um, excitable children and they're going to push and pull on everything and try and bend and flex. And this is just it's so strong once it's set with the hot glue and once it's painted and once everything else is on it that um, I didn't need to worry. So that was that was good. So just went around, built up the walls. The, the floor heights, as with everything I'm building on this, are two inches. Um, so 50 mil... Uh, for each floor just put some uh, kind of I think it's four mil beams across there to make the next floor using coffee stir sticks again the same as always normally again I would stick these down with PVA glue and just using the hot glue gun it just it sets almost instantly it's a lot quicker a lot stronger just checking the figure can move around inside because again it needs to be playable so the children need to be able to move figures in and out with their fingers um, I wanted a huge pile of rubble at the bottom so I had the I suppose brilliant idea of using a big pile of um, tin foil. The problem is nothing really stuck to it very well. So in the end I used um, the glue gun again to stick all these bricks to it. Um, sprinkled a load of kind of grit and gravel over it and um, tile grout that you can see there. Nothing, it didn't really set until I absolutely soaked it in kind of the sealant spray that I use on all the other builds. It took a lot of stuff to get it to set solid. Um, next time I would probably do something different for that. Uh, just, just to get you know a bit of a better finish. But by, by the end it looks good. It just took a lot more work than I thought it would to get it to look good. Um, here I wanted a little um, banister. Not banister. A little balcony coming out of the front for the figures to kind of um, attack from. If they've got bows and arrows or things like that to come out and stand on. There's a little doorway there. Um, I am going to get a second camera so that I can do some shots from over the shoulder as well. So not everything is kind of this drone footage um, from on top. But at the minute, that's all I've got that, that works well. So we'll make do for now. 
again using coffee stars just to patch in as um, the wooden beams for the um, Watland daub or plasterboard kind of top half of the building um, just to give it that uh, that you know wooden beam effect and checking that everything is is fine you can see it, it is strong it holds up there you know there's no weakness whatsoever um, it's really really good so this is the bridge part now I didn't show the making of the bridge because I did it exactly the same as the house I just stuck two pieces of normal extruded polystyrene together to give me the width I wanted and then stuck a load of my um, XPS bricks around it using the hot glue gun exactly the same as building the wall except just sticking them onto the outside I wanted a bit of an explosion there where it's kind of been knocked out but other than that it was exactly the same process so I didn't bother filming the process for that because I didn't need to um, after undercoating it all black just gave it a, a grey undercoat um, rather than dry brushing this was kind of dotted on to give it just a little bit more texture and then over highlighted that which is just building up the highlights really getting lighter and lighter as we go across now all of all three buildings were painted in exactly the same way so again i haven't filmed the the painting of all three buildings they're all done using the same colors and the same techniques and the same style so i just thought i would show it with the bridge um and then you can use your imagination to fill in the gaps for for all of the other buildings that little bit in the middle of the bridge on top was another um thin um, sheet of XPS that I used a texture roller on to give it that kind of cobblestone effect. I don't love it. It's not as deep as I would like. If I was doing it again, I would probably use something like modeling compound or um, sculpt mold on there and then run the texture roller through that because I think it would be a lot a lot deeper as a texture it kind of washes out a little bit I didn't help myself by trying to dry brush a load of colors on here when some of them were still slightly moist and it is kind of blurred them all into one but it looks all right in the end once it's all finished um, and then like all of the others give it a big black watered down acrylic paint wash dab it off with the um, kitchen roll and this just gives it an age look going around with uh, one of the dark green kind of mold slime um, washes just to age the bricks and again did the same thing on the buildings as well just where I thought um, moss and algae might grow and then made a moss mix again I've seen this from Luke at Geek Gaming, seen it from Devs and Dice, loads of people have, have done this same kind of thing I can't, I'm not taking any credit for any of these and it's just PVA glue and the um, flock mixed together this I think was Meadow Springs colour flock um, and it mix it together. I put a little bit of dark green in there as well just to give it difference. Mix it together until it looks like kind of cottage cheesy pasty stuff. A um, bit more glue. And then you stick this wherever you think moss would grow. So I went over where I'd um, airbrush the dark green because that kind of gave me a guide for it. It looks awful at the minute but once it's dry it you know you can't see the glue and it does look really good. Um, Try to get it in some of the cracks. You know moss grows where there's humidity, where there's damp, and where there's sunlight. Um, so I didn't put too much underneath the arch because you wouldn't get too much underneath the arch because there wouldn't be as much light. Um, but you would get some, certainly, you know, in the entrance to the archway. Um, tried to build it into the cracks as well. And I went over the whole bridge and went over all of the buildings um, and did a similar kind of thing to this, just, just building it up. Um, I then put the buildings together as well at, at one point just to kind of match as best I could where it started growing on, say, the bridge and moved on to the building because this is modular. It needs to be modular because I need to take it out. Now, this is my new favourite product. This is um, Woodland Scenics Foliage. And the, I've got a dark green one, which I've used on one of the buildings, and this bright orange one. And it's their kind of flock, but it's on really thin fibres. And you can stretch it out and it works really well as creeping vines. And you just glue it down. And once you've put the sealant on it and everything like that, it's it's going nowhere. It's really, really tough. But it does have that 3D aspect to it. And because it's got the... You could just use flock. But because this has the thin fibres in there as well, it, it it does make a difference. It looks a lot better as, as vines um, and as creepers. And it works really well on buildings. Um, if you've watched my other video, which I'll try and tag if I can figure out how to in the top round about now. Um, with the other house, if you watch that one, I use the dark green version of this on that as well to create the creepers. 
but it's, it's one of my new favorite products for creating foliage and things like that. I'm going to try and use it on um, trees as well next time I make a tree for one of the the um, battle boards which will come up in the next couple of videos I want to have a go at using this because I think it would make a really good canopy as well um, to do and it might, it might make something not not quite Spanish moss because I haven't got the right colour for Spanish moss um, but something similar like kind of hanging from the branches of, of trees and things like that it is a bit of fiddly to kind of especially when your fingers get a little bit sticky like mine have it does tend to stick to your fingers I might have been better off using gloves um, we live and learn I might try that next time but I have run out of nitrile gloves um, and the next thing is um, the cage for the bridge. Now, the cage for the bridge comes from this excellent model called the Executioner, um, which is from Cast and Play, um, which you can get from Patreon. You can get, They've got a Patreon. They, you can get them from my mini factory. But I've got this model, and I've printed off the... the executioner and the platform that I'm doing that for a different project but I had the guy in the cage lying around so I thought you know what I'm going to use that that would look quite cool hanging from the bridge. I'm just going to take a pause there the video isn't sponsored by Cast and Play uh, it's not sponsored by anybody because you know there aren't enough subscribers yet so if you are watching this and you haven't subscribed click subscribe click like click the bell you know what to do um, it all makes a difference but if you do want to support the channel and you do kind of like the content that I'm creating you want me to keep being able to do more the best way to do it if you work in a school great get in touch um, pay me to come in and do a fighting writing workshop with the children they will love it um, but also if you're you know if you're here for the terrain videos you're here because you like war gaming role play gaming all of those kind of things and you're probably going to like game books as well like the old kind of fighting fantasy and things like that and i've got a series of game books out called pick your path adventures they are full of battles they're full of monsters puzzles um the three that are out at the minute are all set in historical or kind of pseudo historical settings there's a victorian london filled with vampires um werewolves that kind of thing there's an egyptian tomb as a tomb robber um with gods and mummies and all that kind of stuff and there is the sherwood forest as you've never seen it before um so they're all there if you like game books if you like wargaming you'll love them um, you can head over to pickyourpathadventures.com, you can get them from Amazon, but anything that you buy, any of those books that you buy, all go towards supporting me and, and helping me carry on writing, helping me carry on doing these kind of things. Um, so that at the minute is the best way. If you want to um, buy me a cup of coffee, coffee or something like that, just buy a book, spread the word, tell other people about them, all of that helps. Uh, and if you do buy anything through pickyourpathadventures.com, they will be signed copies as well. Um, so yeah, that's the best way. Have a look, see if they sound like something you'd enjoy. Thank you. Back to the video. As I've mentioned before, the problem is this is going to be played with by really overeager, kind of excited children, and anything that is stuck on and that hangs out, like this wood from the bridge, will get snapped off almost immediately, you can guarantee it. And it's not just the children, it's transporting it around, having it in a box with it just kind of sticking out, wouldn't be, you know, it would just break off. I know it would. So I had the idea that I'm going to magnetise it. So I stuck the magnets onto the end of the, what are they called, I guess, the, the wooden poles that it's hanging from. I'm sure there's a proper term for them. Um, just put a little, a uh, couple of really tiny 5mm um, magnets on there and then drilled them into the bridge and put them... Um, where they needed to go. Now on the video here I put one magnet in. In the end I ended up using two magnets, one on each um, prong and then put them into um, yeah, where it needed to go. Uh, and I ended up using UV resin to hold them in. I put a bit of hot glue in there as well and put the glue in but then put some UV resin over the top and set that just because I thought it might be a little bit stronger. It might hold it in a little bit better. Um, but what that means is that if it gets knocked, if it gets um, kind of, oh, will this come off? Yes, it will. It, it doesn't matter because it will just come off with the magnets and then it can stick back on with the magnets and it's not a problem, which is exactly what I want. So I'll be using magnets a lot for things like that um, throughout this build. Um, and, you know, it just makes things like this so much easier. I don't have to worry about it. So then it was on to the final house, uh, the final building, which I just wanted, by this point, I just wanted something simple. Didn't want anything overly complicated. 
Um, and so it is just uh, shelled out. Well, I, in, in my head, I think this is going to be an armory. So what I will eventually do when I fill it in is get I'll get some crates, maybe some old weapons and put those in there. Um, I wanted some steps that were built into the bricks so that the character can go up them um, and stand on the platform. It's just a really rudimentary building that would have been there probably as part of a taller tower used to store weapons and food for the soldiers that were on guard on the bridge. Um, it wouldn't have been anything comfortable, didn't need to be. That would have been the other building. This was just there as storage. So when I come to build the, the kind of scatter stuff to go with it towards the end that's what I'll put in there. It'll be weapons and crates and food and, and things like that. And again, it got exactly the same um, paint job as everything else. Um, same greys, highlighted, um, washed over, and then based. And pretty much, that was it. It got the same kind of foliage, um, everything like that. And when I come to do things like posters I'll do those at the end when I've finished the entire board I'll put those kind of extra bits on like posters um, and scatter train the minute I want to just leave it as the buildings but once I know what the board is going to look like finished then I can start to add all of the other stuff so with that I think it's time for the final reveal <laughs> 